hello and welcome and in this video we are going to talk about app script library just like you are seeing one library it's called twitter lib it has a uh, few files gs file um, and then within that individual file you have the library description you know properties and its uh, license and things like that and then we have function and some of the function are actually private so you see data underscore so data is one function which is private somewhere in other place mm, that is uh, defined and then this function can be called in your app script project let's go to another file service.js it has same thing uh, in the beginning some library description and then it has a function a private uh, library again so you see this underscore and, uh, after the name is uh, to indicate they are private function let's go to another file here also you see uh, many functions are private and then this one function it is taking parameter service name so when you are calling this function you have to pass a parameter and then it's calling another private function and private function is maybe defined in another place and build url validate okay so uh, we will go through uh, step by step how we can create a simple app script library and then we use that library in our app script project let's open a google sheet or it's better actually if i create uh, library first so this is a new project app skip project and we will make it uh, library uh, let's uh, kb lib yes, kb is my name Khairul Basars, and then library right so name it and then here we want to create some function let's go to um okay so let's create a function uh, this one e, it is actually uh, to generate unique number and we are going to paste here so only unique is the name of the function and we are going to call this from our uh, what is called Uh, we want to try first with sample you uh, know example let's try this uh, this is our number I just copied from another website and now if I see the okay so we have uh, to create a function function to test uh, test uh, 
Okay, so we got the result. But how do we we use that uh, you know library in another project that we want to see right? So let's create another app script project. Uh, another thing we can now copy this uh, you know app uh, the script ID and we will use that as a library. Let's uh, open a Google sheet. We will uh, create app script project bound to Google, this Google sheet. So we will name this KBLIB test. And then open script editor. Now our goal is to test um, this one this function this function in another project right so now we're going to copy this part the test part here and we're going to name the same uh, you know here file app script project name now the difference is uh, that code of being in the same project or in the different project the difference we will see now uh, we have to add a library and i said uh, we need this script id we'll copy this one and paste here so that is going to be imported here you look up uh, you, uh, to this library right now look up and then we have this uh, kblib library that we have identified here now version is uh, you can choose a proper version uh, but uh, development mode uh, is when you want uh, to access the latest version always um, but let's say you have a library version so this is in it initial version for example and then deploy it so I deploy this library with a version name right so this is my library right now and you see the D slash this part of the code is actually the script ID uh, you, you started with one and uh, end with a uh, zero uh, started with one and end with a zero right so this is uh, now we can have another person uh, first let's try another deploy uh, not this one sorry uh, this is the library access paste here look up now we will have another person uh, we're still not here let's uh, done Ah, we have to refresh it sorry reload uh, paste look up yes so now we have a version one so, so we're going to actually choose development mode because we do, don't want to come here and change the version every time we create new deployment in this library so we keep the development mode and then add now thing you remember when we refresh uh, the function we pasted here disappeared because it we have not saved that uh, code so we're going to go to that uh, page again uh, sorry where this one this part we're going to copy this and come back here and paste here 
now our challenge is to use this library and we're going to only thing we have to do is kb lib dot and you see when we type that library we are able to access the function available to this uh, library uh, let's refresh it uh, one thing you see we have uh, cut or deleted some part of the code the test function but we have not saved it so you, you remember to save this one so that you get um, you know the latest update it is still showing test because um, it is still known as that function is still existing within that library once we save this one and then save here just to keep this one and then you come here and it is still so this one we'll just refresh this one more time and let's see if it is available again mm, so now this time it shows only one function right because we have now only one function both side is properly matching and it is also possible because we have chosen the library in the development mode so it's always checking for the latest version now we're going to run this function as a function uh, so let's create a function test and run it uh, using library uh, takes little longer than you know using the function within the same project um, that's a drawback of it so if you have a very big project and you are using library for all the function is going to uh, you know uh, use, create a huge problem because it will fold the library and fetch uh, you know return data for every function uh, so for quick and faster response it's better to have this function within the same project but if for your um, sake of keeping all the function in one library you can do that and test <coughs> the project then uh, for delivery purpose you can actually copy that function within that same project and use it that will be much uh, faster you see it's taking a little while right for small function and small project it's okay it's, uh, it will not have any uh, side effect that much uh, you know. Thanks uh, and uh, what else I can say in this video and let's try one more function. Let's go to, I'm not uh, creating function on my own, I will use the existing, um, what else? Okay, so here uh, we have uh, the other way of doing the, you know, creating unique list. We have four solution. So we are going to use uh, some of them. Uh, let's this one, use this one. Un it is creating unique array and we are going to use this in our library. Let's go to here and paste this one and function unique uh, array one so it's uh, taking the parameter array and then return 
uh, return uh, array for each uh, value create another uh, you know object v so creating array actually and then object key for each key map value and return array so let's try this uh, i don't know who did this but it's a uh, object to create uh, prevent duplicates is saying that um, let me copy this one as well we are going to use this unique array uh, function in our project right now we are going to create another function test one and we are taking the same array uh, this one actually we don't uh, we can use this directly within that a and then we're going to call this unique array function maybe we can use um, unique equals to and then uh, log a log unique so if we run this it's not going to work because we don't have that function defined within this project so how uh, to get uh, this function uh, work properly let's uh, show you what is the problem we can get uh, it says the unique array one is not defined right so we have to use that kb lib again dot and of course we have to save it we have to save it and then maybe we refresh it mm, okay so now we got that uh, unique array one library we don't have to actually replace it as long as we are able to see uh, it's going to work now we're getting the result same as the previous one uh, we see a little different in uh, result that is displaying floating value let's try the other function and see this one perfectly so the integer but this one converts integer into floating point number so we are not mm, going into detail of that why is that we have uh, testing library only uh, we will use another library function this one unique array 2 and this one says uh, use helper array so helper array and in this function it is taking parameter as array and then it's going through uh, all the element uh, l is the length initial i is the initial index uh, total length and i less than length i plus plus okay and if a index of array mm, equal to minus one and array i not equal to empty so if it is not empty and it is not minus one then a push array so it will um, add append to this array and then 
finally after uh, exiting from the loop it will return array right so it is also actually creating unique list we can use that one as well so let's uh, try again another function uh, this one is going to be 2 and we will have the same or maybe different let's say we have b and then b and then maybe another a maybe another one right so this time we are going to use array 2 function this array 2 unique array 2 and it is also taking a parameter as array so now this time we are going to test test 2 and see how it's working and now this is also able to uh, create unique array uh, but it also uh, shows the floating point number in two places in one place it's uh, integer so some case it is converting ah because it has um, integer one is uh, actually co uh, quotation and within quotation we have that number and other two we have don't have good much so this is converting to float i guess and this one is showing one mm, right so we'll come to that later uh, let's try another example this is filter and index one So this is unique array 3 example yeah it is also taking array as input and function only unique I guess we have already tested this one um, yeah we guys we have already uh, okay this is already we have tested here sorry so this one we're not testing this function is already done um let's try another example okay we're going to use this one in the set uh, unique example four uh, so let's try this copy this and paste in our library project so in this function we have um, simply creating a new set so we have array and returning a set and set don't um, normally have duplicates so let's use that one unique array 4 Um, we're going to copy again this function test four and we're going to use unique array four let's try and test yes so it is also returning correct uh, unique numbers Hmm. so so far we are good uh, as how to actually use the library function in our app script um, project another thing uh, we might want to see how we can um, eventually handle uh, you know google sheet from the library uh, that may be interesting but i uh, will create that in another video it's getting longer 
and thank you.